Hello, Maple class, and welcome to our English lesson for Wednesday. Um, hopefully, yesterday you all managed to have a really good go at just coming up with those ideas about what your characters are going to be like for your story. Um, and today we're going to take that to the next level, and instead of just sort of listing adjectives to describe our characters we're going to see if we can work out how we can show things about our characters through their actions um it's a really effective way of keeping the story developing at the same time as revealing information about the characters um let's have a look at how we can do it but first of all there is a little task for you to have a go at before we do it i like putting in these sort of cold tasks almost at the start of each lesson just so that you guys can have a practice get into the flow of it and then you can compare how far you've come by the end so how might an author suggest that a character is intelligent without just saying um so and so was smart so pause it for a second see if you can come up with a couple of phrases or a couple of sentences how might an author suggest that a character is intelligent OK, so um, some of the ways that I was thinking is that authors often associate people who wear glasses with being intelligent, not all the time, but in writing and when you watch films, that's often a common thing that writers use to show that a character is intelligent. Other things is that they might be reading all of the time. They might answer certain questions um, that are directed at them so that it shows us that they are smart without the author having to use the sentence so and so was smart. Um, I'm sure that you guys came up with loads of as well so if you came up with some that you're particularly proud of please do send them to me as part of your work because I love to see them and I love to share them as well. Um, so let's have a look and see what we're looking at today. So Sometimes using the adjectives themselves can be really effective, but one of the ways that we can really show a deeper understanding of writing is to use examples instead. So here I've got Erica was a shy girl. Now, I've had a go at changing that so that we've got a show don't tell approach to it. Have a go by yourselves, first of all, and then compare yours to mine. So pause the video and try by yourself. How could we show that Erica was shy? What are things that shy people do? OK, and let's have a look at the one that I've come up with as well. So Erica stood just outside the circle of her friends, just as she always seemed to. She wanted to join in, but just couldn't think of what to say. So instead of using the word shy, we show that although she likes being around people, she can't quite get her way into that friendship group. She wants to say things, but she's not sure what to say. And she doesn't want to just speak for the sake of speaking. Uh, so that's although it's more writing, it's much more effective than just saying Erica was a shy girl. So let's have a look at the next one as well. Alex loved reading. Again, can you show me? Um, how we could show that Alex loved reading without needing to use that sentence. So have a go by yourself again, uh, pause the video, and then I'll show you what I came up with as well. Okay, so let's have a look and see. At break time, Alex could always be found with his nose in a book, inside if the teachers would let him, or perched on one of the derelict benches in the playground. That's not the best spelling of playgrounds, though, Mr. Venton. Um, so we can see there that I've managed to show that Alex likes reading books because whenever he has the option to, that's what he's doing. Um, I've also managed to get in a fronted adverbial with at break time explaining when he might be seen reading a book. I've tried to use some exciting language with derelict. That also paints a picture of the school to us as well. If the school's benches are derelict, then it's probably quite an old school. Um, inside, if the teachers would let him, is that again, trying to show that he does love reading, but we can show it in a better way than just those three words. And I've managed to get some of our grammatical features in there as well. Now, what I've done for you is I've showed you what I came up with for my characters yesterday for Katie and Tom. And I've taken a couple of their characteristics and I've tried to do a show don't tell for you. So it's not quite a shared right, because obviously we're all doing different characters, but it will still give you an idea of the sorts of things that I'm looking for. So for Katie, 
I picked out likes playing video games and has long brown hair. Now, instead of just saying Katie likes playing video games, I've gone with Katie sat cross-legged, her tongue sticking out as she concentrated, colours from the screen dancing across her face as she set about beating the game for what felt like the tenth time. Now, there's a few different things that we can see there. We can see that the concentration shows that she's really interested in it. The colours from the screen dancing across her face is just quite nice um, a visual um, representation. It's personification as well, because colours wouldn't actually dance. That's something that people would do. The fact that she's beating the game tells us that she's really good at the game. And the fact is for the 10th time, again, tells us how much she enjoys doing it, that when she's done it once, she's happy to go through and do it again. Long brown hair. Um, so Katie's mum seemed to spend hours on her hair each morning, desperately trying to tie it up and keep each long mahogany strand in place for the day. And yet within minutes, it always seemed a mess. Now, this paragraph, this short um, extract, it does two things for us here. One, it tells us about Katie's hair, but it also tells us about Katie's personality. We know that Katie by herself isn't someone who is worried about her hair. She doesn't spend the whole day making sure that it's perfect and neat and things like that. It is a bit scruffy. And that goes back to these sorts of um, characteristics of her. She's a bit boisterous. It's almost linked into the um, wears ripped jeans as well, because we know that sometimes maybe she's, she doesn't care about what she looks like. She doesn't necessarily take that care. So let's have a look at what I came up with for Tom as well. So for Tom, we've got for, he tries to help Katie. Wherever Katie was, Tom seemed to be as well, just behind her, a pained expression on his face as, as he was what she was, as he was watching, sorry, what she was about to do, despite his best, if quiet, efforts to stop her. Now, again, we've got another front of the with wherever Katie was. We've got some information about Tom there and some information about Katie too. It manages to tell us about both of the characters instead of just tries to help Katie. That tells us one, that Katie's impulsive, but two, that Tom doesn't try, doesn't, doesn't let her go and do it, but tries to stop her. He's a, he's a kind sibling to her, even if he's not often listened to. And I've gone with the hair again for floppy brown hair. So in the evenings, Tom would absentmindedly blow his hair out of his eyes as he devoured page after page. His hair had the peculiar quality of always looking like it needed a cut, even if it had only been cut the day before. Got another front of adverbial in there within the evenings. Absent-mindedly is quite a nice um, adverb. Um, devoured page after page shows how quickly he reads as well. So that also gives us that extra information about the fact he loves reading. Now, if I was being critical of it, I wouldn't want the word cut twice in there. So I've got his hair, the peculiar quality of always looked like it, looking like it needed a cut, even if it had only been cut the day before. So I would probably use a thesaurus to go through and see if I could change one of those versions of cut. So your job, guys, very much depends on what sort of words you had yesterday. Choose four or five of them and see, can you write a short paragraph or a couple of sentences so that when we come to write our story, when we come to write our character descriptions, we can show those things about your characters instead of just telling us. Um, I'm really looking forward to reading these. I know that you guys always come up with some excellent ideas of your English writing, and I'm sure that today will be exactly the same. So as soon as you're done with them, please send them over to me. If you've got any questions or any bits that you want me to have a look at and see if we can improve, just highlight them in what you send to me, and I'm more than happy to give you that feedback as well. Um, but hopefully you enjoy it, and I look forward to reading them.